Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Christine and today I have a bunch of projects that have that farmhouse cottage style feel to them. So hopefully it'll give you some ideas and some inspiration for your own home. So let's just get started. Okay, for this first project, if you've been to my channel before, then you probably have seen in one of my recent thrift hauls that I am obsessed with this cutest little tuffet, stool, furry, fluffy creature. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but I love this little stool. You can see it's been well loved, well used. I only paid $2.99 for it. And the legs are in great condition. I just need to clean them, polish them up a bit. But this shabby fur, I think it's called flaccati back in the day, but this furry fabric is very shabby. So I just need to get rid of that, reupholster it. You can see the original price tag on the bottom was, there was one for $65 and one for $39. So it's probably come from a big box store. It's definitely had an awesome life. So hopefully we can turn it into something fun, adorable, and give it a new life in our house. I just dug through my fabric stash to see if I had anything on hand. And I had these two cow print. You can't tell by the video, but they are so soft and fluffy. They're obviously faux fur but I think one of these is going to be perfect for this little project. I started out by just removing the staples. I just used a little screwdriver to pop them up and then a pair of pliers to pull them out. I was hoping to keep the legs intact because they did have a dowel and a screw and it's a different type of screw. It's one of those, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it, the lug nut. Thankfully, I had the correct size wrench to fit inside, so I just kind of loosened them. I took a couple off, but I just needed to get them removed so that I could remove all of the fabric. Once all of the fabric was removed, I was so pleased to see that the foam was in good condition considering how shabby the fabric was on top, so I can definitely reuse that. I decided to use this brown and white cow print and I am loving this. I was just going to staple gun the fabric to the bottom much like a chair seat, but since the batting and the foam was so thick, I could see very quickly that this was going to be lumpy and wrinkled because of the thick chunky foam. The fabric's quite thick as well, but it's still, it would be noticeable. So I decided to take my old fabric as a template and measure so that I could sew a proper cover and it would be more form fitting. I just took the measurements from the old shabby creature and I didn't have a circle and I'm not good with a pencil and string. Sadly, I couldn't find my fabric tape so I just used this measuring tape but I needed a perfect circle, so I found this little tray. Thank goodness it was almost the same size, so I drew a circle out. I just needed to go around and shave off one inch, or you could use a pencil and string method, but I'm not the best with drawing measurements, so this tray worked perfect for me. And then I cut out the sides. I just measured the sides, and then I just attached the two, pinned them together, You just want to sew around the fabric, close it up, and it could not be more simple. I'm just fitting it back on the foam. It's got a nice snug fit, which is perfect. I'll staple gun it back into place, reattach the feet, and I think this is so adorable. It's probably my favorite project that I've worked on. 
I can use it in almost any place in my house and I'm absolutely in love with this. This next project is also a stool and I see these all the time in decoration. I love them so much. I always see these at the thrift store, round ones, square ones, tall, short. I felt so fortunate to find one that was white and already kind of had that farmhouse appearance. This one looks like it was bar height originally and then someone has cut the legs off of it and now made it counter height, which is perfect for me. And the more beat up, the better, I think. They also tried to remove the top with some force, which has caused a lot of cracks in it. But I only paid $4.99 for it. So I just need to glue some of those areas. There's a difference between dirty and shabby. And this was definitely a dirty stool. You probably can't see it too well on camera but I needed to clean it so well and then sand it down to make it a little bit more shabby. But again, it already has that farmhouse feel and I felt super fortunate to find one that was white. I've passed on so many stools just looking for the right ones. You can see these splits here and underneath the top, they've tried to pry it open. So I just need to glue that and hammer it back in. This is probably such the easiest project. If you see any stools and they're a good price, I always get them because you can use them for so many different things. I thought about actually painting as well, a little green stripe on the top, but I recently did a breadboard in the same style and I thought that might be too matchy matchy in my kitchen. So I left it. I also thought about maybe putting a decoupage on top, but for now it's white, it matches, it's shabby, it's farmhouse. I love it. And I just put this plant on top and I think it looks so cute. This next project I am so excited about because I felt like I was missing out for the longest time. At my thrift stores, I have not been able to find rolling pins. And imagine my surprise on one day, I think I found four or five. So I felt like I hit the jackpot. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I've seen so many different variations where people stencil or decoupage or paint but I am just going to take these rolling pins and paint the ends of them with some fun spring colors. I'll use some greens and some blues. I used a pop of yellow and I will throw them in this adorable basket that I recently thrifted as well. And I think these are gonna be so cute as some decoration. This was a plastic rolling pin. I actually think it was for a child but I thought it would be so great to put some Mod Podge on it and some tissue paper and sand it back a little bit, but this was a major fail. So just a little tip for you, don't ever use old Mod Podge. Mine had dried up, it was thick and lumpy, and so when I painted it on, I could definitely see right away that it was gonna just be really lumpy underneath, but it was a major fail. I'm still gonna put it in the basket for now, and I will definitely be on the lookout for another rolling pin. I will try this again, note to self, I will get some new Mod Podge, and I'll show you hopefully down the road what I was going for, because I think it ultimately will be such a cute idea. I did also put some butcher block oil on the center of each of these, just to freshen them up a bit as well. And I love how cute these look. I sanded them down a little bit and they are such an adorable little decoration in my kitchen.
this next little bird he was all by himself at the thrift store so i had to pick him up it's not my colors so i just took some white chalk paint painted all around and even inside some of those little holes usually after i paint these birds i've done this before i like to put a dark wax on them to give them a more antique appearance or I've done a white wax to give them a little bit more of a cement appearance. But for this one, I just wanted a bright white to use as a display on top of some books on a shelf in my hutch. And I think he's ever so cute. And I was so glad that I rescued him. This next one I'm including, I actually did this project a while back for our old house, but I'm including it because as I'm unpacking boxes slowly but surely moving into the new home, I found it and I thought this would match perfectly with a project that I recently did. I'll insert here, just that spring color green I love so much. It reminds me of spring and that little stencil that says flowers on it and this lavender, I thought it would match perfectly with these flowers that are the same colors on this little board. You can see the back of it is just a piece of wood that I painted with some white chalk paint. And then I'll show you here, I see these little stamps all the time at the craft store. Don't mind our neighbor's daughter decided to draw on them a little bit, so don't pay attention to that. but. This first one is kind of the inspiration, that thick purple one. And then here's another little one. And then this little sponge I've actually used on quite a few projects. That's super easy to do. You just dip it in and lightly put it on your project. But I am not an artist. I need all the help I can get. So I had my friend take this big stamp as her inspiration. And she painted on these purple flowers and then used a little blue. You can see that little swirl in the center. She just used a different color and then she just lined it with white paint on the edge. And I love how cute this turned out. I'm sanding it down a bit because the colors are quite bright and I wanna mute them just a tiny bit. You could literally just get a piece of wood, paint anything you want on it. I find these hooks all the time at the thrift store as well. You can paint them or you can leave them as normal, screw them on, and this is such an easy project. And it is now hanging in my bathroom. I love those chunky hooks, and I think this is so adorable. next project if you saw one of my recent thrift store hauls i purchased these two lamps i was so excited to find two of them that were matching i love the navy blue color and you can kind of see that little pale gold detailing on them which i think is so beautiful but the bottom that brass is chipped and dull and i just needed to freshen that up and paint it a little bit so I just needed to tape and cover it really well so that paint doesn't get on the sides. So I'll just tape everything around the bottom. And then I used this metallic gold that I've used on projects before and such a cute difference. Now that the gold is on there, you can see that the little detailing on the side of the lamp definitely stands out a lot more, pops a little bit more and I love these. They're gonna be perfect in my guest bedroom. This next project, you can see I purchased these fluffy pillows. I usually don't buy linens at the thrift store but these were in almost new condition. They were the down feather inserts. The red, I just unzipped and re-donated those. And then I took a little trip to the fabric store, 
I'll show you here. It's always fun to look at fabric from the comfort of your couch. And every time I go to the fabric store, I always get inspired and ideas for a new project. They had so many beautiful, colorful fabrics to choose from. I love this gray and white buffalo check. I'll definitely use that on another project, some Roman shades that I wanna do. So hopefully I'll show you that down the road. That's another project for another day, but I think that fabric is so cute as well. I just looked through this whole store. I had my mind set on some grain sack fabric for this project, but they didn't have any at this store. So I did find some online and I absolutely love it. I just finished a little stool. You may have already seen that in my last video that turned out so cute. And so I had some extra left over to make these pillows. And then I even went back and ordered a bunch more to make some more pillows and a couple other projects. I just measured and cut these out to size to match the pillow, super easy. It's just sewing a straight line. And then I purchased these, this ongoing zipper and then the little zippers that go with it so that I could make a lot of pillows. You just cut it down to the size you need, sew it on, and then I bought a bunch of these little zippers and you attach those and you're set. And there's the little zipper. You can see there I've just sewn it on and attached the little zipper piece. And I think these are so adorable. I have them in my living room for now. I'm definitely going to be making more with the new fabric that's coming. I'm putting them additional places in my house because I think this fabric is so cute. The last project is this big, huge vase. I've been trying to decide what to do with it as I was unpacking. It's been in the garage for a while, and I just decided I liked the gray color underneath, and so I just added a little dry brush with some white chalk paint on the top just to give it a little bit more texture and interest. I just recently did this to some terracotta pots that turned out so cute. So I thought, why not? I like the gray. I just brushed a little bit of white chalk paint on it. You can see I did this one earlier in my office that has that dark rustic stone clay appearance. And then this one I wanted a little bit lighter and I just put it in a hallway next to a hutch and I think it turned out super cute. And that's it. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me today. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do so. I'd love to have you come back and join me. Give me a big old thumbs up. It sure does help my channel. And I hope the rest of your day is absolutely wonderful. Bye-bye.